Yo, what's going on everybody? A.A. Ron here. Raider Pete. What? And welcome back to Pan Nerdy's review of HBO's Watchmen. And can you believe we're already on episode 7 titled An Almost Religious Awe. And oh man, was this a crazy ass episode. I mean, it, I think this could have been probably the wackiest in terms of just the really just out there it felt like we were watching something inspired from a comic book i mean it really yes. did in that terms you know a lot of reveals um some crazy stuff really messing with timelines flashbacks reveals intertwining stories the ball is really rolling fast now towards the climax of, oh yeah yeah and in 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 story only four hours until the millennium clock ticks talk <laughs> yeah. and uh who knows what's going to happen because lady true well, she does kind of reveal at the end what's going on. We'll get to that, but a lot of crazy stuff. Let's get right into it. Um, so it actually starts off with like a um, like a old program, like a television program, like would be on like a local you know news station or something, talking about well, John Osterman, aka Doctor Manhattan, and um, not only his uh, creation, his origin, and as well as his um, involvement in Vietnam. Turns out it was a uh, actually a TV program in Vietnam in the year 87 during like a scene like a Dr. Manhattan Day celebration somewhere mm -hmm. in Vietnam and uh, sure. through the eyes or the memory of Angela as a little girl yeah. and um, we kind of see right off the bat little bits of how, you know what made her Sister Night yeah. including a VHS tape of a show called Sister Night pretty much with almost the exact same outfit that she ended up you know ends up dawning later the basically the the iv treatment is propelling her her f a few memories that she had there's a lot more and they're all vivid yes so they're all like like she's she's living them and and, and now she's got reference for her grandparents both of them right with her childhood memories and then with her grandfather's nostalgia memories they're kind of bouncing it out because yeah. she did overdose after taking all of those pills um, Pete called it on that. She downed all of them, and they're you know basically clearing her out. Um, you know, even while she's uh, you know when she finally kind of comes to and Lady True is like talking to her about her coming in and out of it five times and asking her this and that already. Um, she gives her this um, tutorial with essentially a nanobot injection that essentially plays a infomercial um, about what's going on with you in your head. Um, with like a freaking company logo stamp and everything and their mission fucking statement and everything and uh, what they're doing and it kind of breaks it down how this these things are going in there and cleaning out and flushing out all the nostalgia that's on her on her central nervous system or whatever um, or not her central nervous but you know the part in her brain where her memories are the hippocampus perhaps and um, flushing that out and uh, pretty cool um, but me and Pete were just like can you just show her like a video like on like a TV or something. Yeah. Like, no, I'm gonna inject you with nanobots. Yes. Um, but back to '87, <laughs> um, Vietnam, at this Doctor Manhattan celebration. Oh yeah, and we actually get a cool shot of Doctor Manhattan in that old war footage that they're showing, of oh, him yeah. like walking through Vietnam. Giant size. They put a filter on him and everything. He's giant size. Luckily, he's, he's got like, underwear on. <laughs> we're just shooting lasers. <laughs> right, blasting shit. It's pretty cool, man. Um, so we actually got to see him finally in the show, besides the little cam feed from like episode two or whatever it was. Um, but we're seeing the celebration, and we kind of see, like we said, bits of Angela and her inspiration. But you know, like it, like we said, there's some trauma involved, and uh, not only her trauma um, that she ends up facing, but she starts not only having memories, you know, kind of flip flop back and forth with, um, you know, her, what, what she saw in Will's past, but also it seems to trigger show us at least that she actually does have that um that uh passed on that generational trauma like that kid in that um squid um, anonymous um group was talking about how he's like i was born like 10 years after the event but i still feel my mom's pain you know yeah it's like as angela was a little girl she felt that and it kind of coincides with this whole weird trip she's having with her own memories and everything and then it goes to the point where, well, a, uh, essentially a terrorist bombs this uh, event and Angela's parents are right by the um, you know, explosion zone and get blasted. And that's how her parents pass and she becomes an orphan. And it's yeah. really crazy. I mean, it, it shows us 
all of her childhood. I mean, she spotted the guy with the bomb bag. Yep. Getting mm-hmm. it delivered, and then he's the one that kamikaze himself. And, of course, her folks, you know, told her to stay away from that book that she just picked out that was about... Oh, the VHS. A VHS yeah. tape about a uh, movie, Sister, Sister Night. Night. Yeah. yeah. So cool. she has her inspiration not only for her character, Sister Night, from that movie, mm-hmm. but now she also has, like, a really in-depth touch with her grandmother because now we find out more I don't know if you want to jump to that at all but like learning about her grandmother and then connecting all the dots there yeah. e- even meeting a cop that was when she was an orphan she turned into an orphan right and the cop found the guy that what passed oh, the that, bag on right and she was like yeah that was him and the immediate justice in the 51st state apparently is take him out back with the bag over his head and mm-hmm. one shot to the head and she even wanted to hear it too she asked if she can listen and that's yeah. when the lady cop was like, like here gave take her this badge badge see me when you're ready yeah yeah that's pretty cool so that's more to her inspiration right and it's, and it's pretty cool and it's again that was another scene where it kind of showed that weird trauma really or generational trauma where she almost kind of felt the essence of like you know um being a cop um you know in a past well not yeah. her but her grandfather lived what in. he went through yeah um so back in the other world uh the other world uh agent blake is getting contacted by pd um i know yeah speaking of pd by the way so i looked into that pdpedia you know and it actually does talk about what happened the night owl right so it was back in 95 it's 10 years after the events of the bla- of the squid, right? They're still running amok, but that's when the Klein's dad has the act that goes into effect that starts um, the vigilante thing, right? Interesting. So they have to stop, and they essentially both get arrested, though, right? Both of them. But somehow, and they don't actually disclose this yet, but Lori gets out of it, and Night Owl gets imprisoned for the vigilante thing. So that's where he's, that's how he's gotten to, gotten to jail. Um, so, Petey calls Lori up and is informing her because I guess she sent him out to go look at you know Looking Glass and see if he's connected to Seventh Calvary at all. Well, he shows up the Looking Glass's bunker and well, there's like a couple there's like five dead Calvary members, one with his mask off, and they're like, yeah, I don't think Glass is part of this, but. Thing is, though, at this point, um, where is Glass? You know, we didn't see him this episode. Is he in custody right now? Or he obviously escaped death. That's for sure. Yeah. So he's uh, he definitely escaped death, and he must have been the one who killed those dudes. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but uh, then Blake, uh, while you know she while she's talking to Petey, she's actually on her way to somebody's house. Well, Crawford's house. She goes talk to Crawford's wife and basically kind of spill the beans and be like, hey. This is what we know. Actually, what we found out through the nostalgia trip is that, you know, the Hooded Justice all along was really Will Reeves. What a revelation. Actually, and we think that the reason he killed Judd is because of the Calvary. Boom, boom, boom. And, you know, the whole time, um, Miss Crawford is sitting there like she knows, or she doesn't know what she's talking about, but then she finally is just like, look, bitch. I know what's. I, I know you there's know what's going on. There's a bigger plan here. Yeah, there's a yeah. bigger plan. You don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And in a really uh, hysterical scene, she like pulls out a button and gets ready to press it like she's gonna do something. And Lori's like, "What? What are you doing with it's, that?" It's like an old school garage door clicker <laughs> with like the multiple buttons, like one for the lights, one for the fan, and she's like, shit, "One shit, for the garage shit. door, right?" <laughs> and then it finally works, and it's a fucking old school trap door. Lori even yeah. says later when we get back to her, she's like, "Really? Who has a freaking trap door like mm. nowadays? Like, what the hell?" Um, it was pretty funny, but um, yeah, she finds it to be annoying. Um, so then um, we get a scene with Angela's talking to um, we're back over to her. She's talking to Lady True's uh, kid. Kid, we'll learn something about that in a minute. Beyond science experiment, I mean, from yeah. the get go, she seemed like a science. Experiment. Yeah, we and she was having those dreams, right? That she mentioned to her mom. Yeah. Well, she's talking to her, and. Um, uh, as she's talking to her uh, about stuff, uh, Bian is kind of asking her some questions about some things and asking her, like, you know, what do you, uh, you know, well, really just kind of doing some assessment tests. But then as she's asking her questions, An- Angela goes under again, so to speak, goes back into her memories um, and uh, kind of getting a flashback back to uh, the whole thing we talked about where 
Um, she, you know, talked about her parents or got her parents killer found, and then mm-hmm. the police officers gave her the badge and all that. Um, but when she wakes up, she says, "Yeah, I was I was in my own memory." And uh, True's daughter explains about the dreams to her again. And yeah, but she she asked her like, "What memory was that?" It was my tenth birthday, and I got a pony. Oh, personally. so that was Lady. <laughs> that was Lady True, actually. Right, actually. Lady True. But yeah, yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that was so great. We both laughed at that because she's so cold, man. She's, she's not gonna disclose anything. Here. Like she's going through so much, and you feel like she might actually be like, "Well, it was this," but she's like. No, I'm not saying shit to you. Um, it was great. Um, so we, after you know, uh, Angela's sitting there listening about you know how uh, Lady True's daughter Bianca has these dreams about being an old lady. Um, we get the nice, awesome Ozzy transition. You know they're always great to Ozymandias um, and his 365th day of the people versus uh, Adrian Veidt and. Um, yeah, so pretty you're crazy, saying man. that because they're counting the days down, it's just a trial that goes on every day in consecutive days for a year without an outcome. Like there's pretty much. never an outcome. Yeah, like they kept going and going and nobody could figure out anything. But do you think anything. it always starts and ends the same? Like the judge comes in, let's get this going real quick. And then yeah. it always ends with them pointing and shouting guilty or something. That's where I think it's kind of both our theories in one, where I think it's like, they so see the day like, oh, it's been another day of the trial. Let's continue, and then, but they don't remember what they all fucking talked about. Right. So, in, in essence, it kind of is like a Groundhog, Groundhog day. day. But this it, time, it's yeah. Before it was him waking up with, like, all this energy to get this invention stuff going, but meanwhile, the middle of the day, it's an anniversary of sorts, and now it's just the trial, same one well, every yeah, day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's gotten to this point where it's gone so much that now it's, like, stuck in this loop. But it's interesting, though, like, the amount of uh, passion behind it all. And you're like, wow, maybe they really are sentient and stuff to the point where they really do want him, like, you know, put away right. or something or isolated from them. But then he gets a wink from one of the characters, one of the yeah, clone well, girls. Yeah, the one the that actually prosecutes her. Yeah, right. he, he has a really brilliant moment in how serious she is, but then she winks at him afterward. It's and the whole time he's smiling and kind of just like, oh yeah, in his Ozymandia suit, smiling and kind of being like, whatever. When he finally gets his d- defense, he just lets one rip. Yeah. Um, well, if you're going to represent yourself, might as well rip one. He's like, defense close. Uh, so, the subtitle for that was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was really great. It, it, it was like slow farting and squeaky squ- fart. Squeaky emit, emission, emission or something. Emission. Uh, it was pretty great, dude. So basically what we're getting at, and by that, we, we that's when we figured, okay, so maybe he is reliving this more. This At least to the point where they're, they think they're finding him guilty, but nothing happens afterwards because he's just like, whatever, dude. I'm just going to fart. Let's get this on with. I know it's going to happen again. He's like, damn, now I'm stuck in this loop. He's like, I was almost out, but now I'm stuck in this jury loop. Like, what the hell? Um, and, yeah. Like, I think, basically, I think he can dictate, like, where the loop goes. But if they get on that task too much, they'll get stuck in that. And it's an everyday thing, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Because he can kind of because for a while it was the birthday thing, and then he made a play, and that's what they did every day was just do this play, right? And then um, for a while he was like every day he was doing the catapult. I'm just wondering, and, and maybe any of you would comment on this, how it all started, like how he was brought to this moon of Jupiter, and thrown into this cavity, this like chasm, this this canyon, if you will, of the moon. That has a hemisphere inside of it. Why well, you know if it's even a can? How do you know if it's it? even like technically on the moon? Maybe this that's where the portal is, and it's just in a different dimension. Or well, if it's you're gonna say that, it might as well be a Star Trek holodeck, and the whole thing is a giant hologram world. That's what I'm saying. It's just basically like it's just that's where he. It's just the furthest place they can go. The fact that when he got pulled <clears throat> back, instead of going back down through this like sky. He came out a little side door pocket in the middle of the forest. Well, that's what makes me think it's like a weird pocket dimension because he went up and out, but then when he got pulled back, un- like back into the ground, he came out sideways. So it like makes no lo- there's like no logical sense of where he comes from. I mean, f- for fuck's sake, he just literally just gets he just goes. We could probably like do a whole thirty minutes on just 
the theories behind that. Yeah, he's it's, <laughs> and, and we still don't even get any conclusion on where it is. Like they almost get to the point where like, and this is what is going on here. Our God did this, but they never actually say why they're all there. Yeah. And it kind of ends with some blasphemy. And he's like, let's get real people to come in here and tell them, you know, real subjects to say, you know, to find him guilty. And there's a bunch of little pigs. And then they say he's guilty and they point. And he's like, what the fuck ever. And that's how it ends with him. So still, bizarre old land. You know, what the hell's going on with Adrian Veidt? To be honest, who knows besides the fact that we know he's trying to escape a living hell. All right? And it's pretty freaking wild. That's the first half of the show. The second half is the... Big time reveals. Yeah, and then we get back to crazy Angela Land. And speaking of bizarro shit, um, we find out because uh, Angela is talking to Lady True now, and she's basically like, "Okay, what's going on?" Because you know, I, I'm not supposed to take my grandfather's memories. Okay, maybe take a little bit at a time. You're saying if that's how you really do it, but so what's up? You've been dosing, uh, slowly dosing your daughter with uh, somebody's memories. And she's like, what, Pete? What does she say? It's not my freaking daughter. It's my mom. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> that's just my mom 2.0, which I have to slowly download every time she goes to bed through an IV. Yeah. She's all like, yeah, my I mom's memories. Her, it just so happens mom. that she's now at this point at my mom as an old lady going through lots of pain and right. anger and suffering so, so she's a clone and she's trying to like integrate memories and make a better version essentially um, she wants her mom present for what's next well what's next what does your clock do yeah four I'm hours i'm not telling yeah all she says back and forth for an allergy like i'm not yeah. angela and her were like you know you'd ask a question whether it be simple or complex you're just gonna get shut down yeah they're just not, not even beating around the bush just straight up like nope and then you know but they're still they're playing but yeah either way there's four hours to whatever this clock's doing. Mm-hmm. She still didn't want to tell us at this point, or Angela at that point, I should say. But um, we get back to uh, Lori um, waking up in the underground. Um, now, I'm not saying this is necessarily under Judd's house, but she's waking up in a chair tied up with the old well, Cyclops eye behind her. A J.C. Penny, a shut down J.C. Penny. J.C. Penny, which, yeah, Pete totally was like, yeah, it's a mall. Uh, and it totally is, yeah. And that was a pretty funny callback. Um so she's there. She's in the bunker. Um, as she's sitting there, Klein strolls in, you know, gives some stupid monologue how he tries to justify his racism with some fancy, you know, yeah. this is what we're really doing. You know, uh, I'm just trying to get, you know, white people back to where they deserve or something. And it's like, geez, Louise, man. But they're doing it in a real aid of way because, you know what, he kind of reveals the whole plan. Yeah, Angela because, doesn't really because want Because it, it was but. kind of a joke the way he said, like, the white but. man has a hard time these days, which especially in that alternate dimension, yeah. definitely does not have a hard time. Mm-hmm. Doesn't now, and definitely doesn't then, but the fact of the matter is, he's like, you know, there is a bigger purpose. Yeah, and it's not just you know you know having everybody he, wear masks. He's like, I don't really care about black or white. I care about blue. Blue, right? Um, and you see this big thing what? behind him too, a big machine. Well, not that, but in the episode, you see this big machine behind him, um, like light box thing. Yeah. And he essentially. So what does that mean? Well, we learn here in a little bit. He's essentially trying to make himself Doctor Manhattan. Um, but we don't know something else that's going on that's pretty crazy. We'll get to in a minute. But I'll, what we want to come back to the Seventh Calvary real quick. We didn't mention is that uh, when Lori breaks all this down to, well, she thinks she's breaking it down to Miss Crawford, J- uh, Jane. That is, she's telling her like, yeah, um, the Seventh Calvary uh, is essentially they all uh, in Klein essentially planned all this um, Seventh Calvary shit and the White Knight. So cops and enemy and criminals quote unquote all wear masks so you don't know who's the good and bad guys are it was all part of the plan to again cause a a, a ruckus a um, distraction while they get ready for well a capture of sorts mm-hmm. a capture plan but uh, before we get to that um, yeah it's really weird too we were, we we're like what Doc Klein coming to Manhattan that's crazy uh, even more weird uh, let's talk about some an elephant in the room, Pete. Literally, uh, Angela, while uh, Lady True's on, you know, on the TV outside the Millennium Clock, you know, at some kind of rally or some something to, you know, get ready to. Uh, She's about to launch a big you know. 
event. Right. With her new big product. The Millennium Clock. Correct. And, uh, Angela fouls her uh, tube down to where she thinks her grandfather is being stored at. Um, and when she finally breaks in, what does she discover? Well, an elephant. Um, and an elephant's hooked up to the same kind of advice that she's hooked up to. So what I'm guessing is it has Ooh. something to do with the whole elephants have good memory thing, is what I'm thinking. Like there must be something in there that they're pumping from the elephant into the machine that helps make some drug that gets pumped into Angela to help heighten her memories. That's kind of my weird thought. Uh, that is that is something. If it's just specifically just for its science, the scientific advantages of its brain, or is it like literally being fed memories? Oh, another yeah. elephant. <laughs> yeah, we were wondering if it was being, being fed memories of an elephant, maybe or if it was a, part of Angela's maybe thing. Maybe it was a pet of her mother's when she was a young girl, or who knows? Like who knows? I think that's an interesting theory, though. It's you're probably spot on. I didn't even think of that. Oh, with the elephant memory thing. Yeah. That was my first guess, but who knows? I mean, it was just because it was so bizarre. It was like, so Angela's connected to an elephant? Like, the fuck? Well, I don't know if she was connected to an elephant, but... It, well, it was coming from the same room. When she ripped it off, the warning alarm was just about hers, not the elephant's, right? Right, Even but it just she said... Was, like, in a different part yeah, of the Yeah, I forget what the alarm said. It's not like client is unhooked or, you know, disconnected or something, but... Um, yeah. Either way, real bizarre... And maybe we'll figure out more about that soon, but she ends up um, passing out uh, while all that happens, and uh, it kind of gets her gets our uh, the scene where she uh, finally meets Gran- uh, Grandma uh, June, uh, you know June, the one who uh, was married to the Hooded Justice himself, um, Angela's grandmother. So uh, they meet, and she's like, "I'm taking you home, getting you out of here." Uh, just like she real took, touching just, scene. Just like she took her daddy at a young age out of that apartment in New York and straight to Tulsa. She's now taking little Angela Home out of out of Vietnam and yep. back to Tulsa. Right. And right uh, well, and then you know they have a scene where they're eating and they're catching up and this and that. She even mentions to her that she had a heart attack at one point, just a little one though. And blah blah blah. Well, ends up you know one thing after another with poor little Angela. Right before they're about to get in the taxi, Grandma has a, has a heart attack and dies. And it's like, man, nonstop with uh, Angela here. And she's still in Vietnam at that point. And, well, it does say earlier in the show she grew up in Vietnam. So yeah. we know that how, you know, what makes her so dang cold and, and uh, hard and, uh, like she is. She lost her parents. She lost her grandma. Which, but what she didn't lose was that video of Sister Knight and that police oh, badge. Oh, that police badge, right. Um, so we get back to her, Angela, and she's running down the hallway after she wakes up. She goes to the elevator. She goes down to level zero, um, to where she finds a room, uh, almost like a Cerebro-esque room with a blue globe in the middle of it. And as, as Angela touches little dots on the blue globe, um, places on earth, it, uh, shows a video of somebody having their Dr. Manhattan booth call. Yep. Remember the same one Lori did back in episode three, I believe? Just press any city in any country of the world, and that phone booth will give you all its recordings. Yeah, and well, that kind of tells us that they've just been going here <laughs> and not to Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. And we're like, well, what the heck? So I guess Lady True's connected to him somehow. And uh, Well, if she inherited or bought every tech piece of technology and science from him... From Ozymandias? From Ozymandias, then she probably... Yeah, because she said she owned all of them, so, yeah. Yeah. She's like, well, it doesn't matter, though. I get them all, and he ignores them. But uh, she's like, funny thing is, she ignores them, though, because he's actually here in Tulsa. And um, Angela's like, what? And then she's like, yeah, he's here in Tulsa. And, well, the 7th Calvary? And she's like, let's stop fucking around. And that's fine when Lady True kind of drops the F-bomb, which is awesome. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to tell you everything. She's like... And Angela's like, well, what the hell is going on with the clock, man? So tell me what's going on with that. And she's she's like, don't tell me you're going to try saving the world. And she's like, well, actually, Dr. Manhattan's here, and we know it. And we know the 7th Calvary's trying to capture Dr. Manhattan. And, well, they're going to capture him, and they're going to kill him. And then they're going to become, become him. him. And, it's like, and when they say they, it's not just the senator, it's the whole group. Like, they're going to become like a little colony of Dr. Manhattan's. I don't know. I think, that, I think they're just going to do one, but maybe they're going to do multiple. Mm-hmm. 
Either way, Lady True's plan with the Millennium Clock is to stop that. So she says, I am saving humanity, quote unquote, I guess. Um, but who knows? She should could have a darker plan than that. Because what the hell, how does Adrian Veidt connect to all this? Um, but what's really interesting is what me and Pete kind of immediately was like, what? Maybe this is that. Lady True's like, because Angela's like, I gotta fucking go. And Lady True's like, well, you didn't even ask. You didn't even ask who Dr. Manhattan was. Yeah, she's, she's like, what? He's a human amongst us walking around right. for days and days and, and weeks you didn't and weeks. E- and you didn't even, more than that even. And more she, than that, yeah. And she's like, uh, you don't even ask who he is? And she's just like, whatever. I'm thinking, and I start running through my head at me like, who who could it be? And I look at Pete and I'm like, dude, Cal, is he Dr. Manhattan? And immediately I was like, yes. Yes, because, because that whole weird thing. The whole weird thing, making breakfast for his kids, and they were yeah. asking about death, and he was like, there's absolutely nothing zero zilch. in the way he said it, in the tone he said it, it's like, yes. that is totally a Dr. Manhattan, Manhattan thing. I call. Like, Philosophy. We were, when we first even saw it, we that's, wondered about yeah. it. We are like, maybe that's just kind of like a little Easter egg, Dr. Manhattan. Mm. But it was. It, well, it was. <laughs> Because directly, directly. As Angela, when Angela gets back home, she's talking to, to Cal. Cal, like, like she knows what's really going on, and like we start to be like, wait, she knows something we don't know as and an why audience. Does she have a hammer, like, yeah, what the hell's about to go down. She's like, I'm sorry, Cal, you, I gotta do this. He's like, what are you talking about? She's like, John, and we're like, what, John Osterman? And she's basically like, you know, you, you, it was your plan. You actually wanted me to do this. So you you know you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the chance of, of being found out if you know it's better if you didn't know and you just you know stayed didn't know. Yeah. So she essentially he's like what and she essentially hammers the fuck out of him. Yeah, this Cal human body all all he knew was he was in an accident and after the accident he forgot a whole bunch, and here he is with. Yeah, well, with it wasn't an accident or what happened or something happened between those two and they had to hide him right because. The, what we learn next episode is actually Dr. Manhattan has always loved Angela and he always knew he loved her and he could, it's like some weird infinite time thing, but regardless he meets her in Vietnam, and we'll get to that in a second, but she beats the shit out of him until he's dead with a hammer she breaks open his head digs into his forehead and pulls out a little Dr. Manhattan ring thing Yeah. and when he she does in the glow of the ring the body of Cal turns into Dr. Manhattan. So it must have been some, like, lock. Like, put that in my head, and that'll turn me into the human. If you need me to, just break open my head, take this piece out, and then... And reset. Uh, reset, reset me. Yeah. So, and then she, she, you know, he wakes up, and she's mm-hmm. like, hey, baby, we got a we got lot to fucking worry about or something like that. And it's like... She said that, yeah. Yeah, she said that. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, what the hell? So she's known about Dr. Manhattan the whole time. She's obviously, she knows about him because she's been dating him the whole time. Mm-hmm. Raising other people's kids with him. Uh, raising other people's kids with him the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's, it's been no there in her face. No wonder she felt the kids were so safe at home. With him. Going out and doing her vigilante police work. It's like, you know what to do. Like, he must be well trained. I don't know. But, well, oh yeah, also, he's more than that. Even the little Easter eggs with uh, Lori being like, how she's always like talking about like man you're real lucky with cow Kyle. cow's real hot and all this stuff and it's like well because she used to technically date cow <laughs> uh but either way wow so as an audience watching we were really shocked because we didn't know that and she knew that the whole time we were watching exactly. the show this whole time she was dr brent hand's number three lady yeah and hiding him harboring mm-hmm. him in tulsa under the skies of Cal, her lover. Well, Will there be a menage a trois with Lori? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. But the, and the episode ends with the, the blue glow of him in the eye and her saying that, like, hey, baby, like, we done fucked up or we got a lot of shit to worry about. And it uh, looks like we're going to get some origin story between their meeting next episode. Yeah, that's going to be badass. How? Because at that point, he was supposed to be gone, so there must be some kind of other Manhattan day. He walks in with a mask manhattan mask and since he's already blue she must have thought it was some guy dressing up like manhattan i think the biggest reveal i mean that was the biggest but another big one that's equivalent is the fact that he was never on mars in the first place oh yeah and just living amongst people in tulsa well and he might have went to mars he did go to mars at one point in the comic but yeah. he didn't stay there long like just did some landscaping and came back he came back I was like i'm bored i'm gonna go fuck with people again <laughs> 
and apparently Lady True must have knew this or somebody did, and they've been just sending out a transmission to everybody saying that he's on Mars. Other dimension or actual moon of Jupiter, who do you think got him there? Was it True? Yeah, that's another question, or too. Or was it actual Dr. Manhattan? Because the satellite has to be connected to True, right? It has to be connected to Manhattan, though, because all those... Well, like, Manhattan can, doesn't need a satellite those, to see him. But all those clones and stuff are like, that's the guy. That's their guy. That's right? where I think they're, that's where I think they haven't showed us his face yet. They're, the whole thing where well, Dr. Manhattan might actually be what Mr. Phillips looks like. Right. Yeah, like Mr. Phillips, like that it, actor might be His original form, yeah. not Cal, his like, disguise. Yeah, the jo- John um, Osterman, what he looked like when he was before he, Dr. Manhattan. Was yeah, what we've been saying that since, Mr. Phillips. since day one just because he fits the bill as far as the yeah. look of that actor. Right, so we're thinking that might be the yeah. case. Um, because they still haven't showed his face yet, right? They, mm-hmm. They're still not revealing that. In the giant thing where they're walking, they cut it off right at his chin. Right. Um, in the preview, he's wearing a mask over his face. But as the giant, he is wearing a very large pair of boxer briefs. Uh, yeah, his Whether black tighties. Bull- bulletproof Fruit of the Loom, I assume? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, right. Uh, but, man, it's going to be crazy. we got two episodes left, man, uh, this season. Uh, a big bombshell dropped on us that the unknowing granddaughter of the original vigilante is banging Dr. Manhattan and harboring him in Tulsa. It's just one full as circle a black husband. of love. Yeah, with a little dot in the middle. Um, so, wow, guys. Crazy shit. Hope you enjoyed episode seven. Looking forward for episode eight. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the enjoyment. And, Always. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just blasted. I, I don't Two more know. episodes to go, right? Two more, bro. Let's do it. All right. See you guys. Peace.